Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Hearts of Iron for using a mod called Pax Britannica, an Imperial Timeline in which we're playing as the United Commonwealth of America as we're revisiting the Indian policy right now. Dating back to the days of the first colonists of America, our relationship with the native Indians has come become a complex one today. We live on reservations, but some of the more liberal members of our, both our government and the one in London have called for us to rethink this approach and work to revive the culture. However, there are others who believe that we should instead focus on assimilation. While we do not know for sure what path to take, the Indian question is not something that can be ignored, or sooner or later, or later, we'll have to give an answer, addressing the Ministry of Indian Affairs. Um, so yeah, we're playing as the United Commonwealth of America under Calvin Coolidge. He's looking rough. Oh my god, it's 1933, February 25th. He's looking very rough though, but we, this, uh, I've played this mod before. I've never actually played this, uh, nation before, the United Commonwealth of America, which is kind of weird, but you know, you know, what if, this basically mod asks, what if, uh, and Pearl Britain still ruled over a billion souls, and the American uh, Revolution failed, so. Uh, I guess we have accepted cultures here, too. If you're worried about that, please go right ahead. We have minority rights, but, you know, our main culture is New Englander. Old Dixie is an accepted culture. Appalachian, Midwestern are accepted cultures, too. And what else? We have Seminoles, an accepted culture. Freedmen's an accepted culture. Uh, what else do we have here? So, we get a decision. We can promote EIEC Adventures, or support from mega corporations. I can help them improve, begin to improve by a small amount. Um, or we can do a discourage EIEC expansion. Support from the mega corporation will decrease. So I'm not sure which way we're gonna go, so yeah. I guess we just, uh, Dol Bear Belcom to be available to con as a contract team. American technical exceptionalism. Hmm. Uh, versus what down here? Narco liberals with uh, Edison proposed mass electrification, electrification plan. You know, in this way, promote bilingualism or discourage native. Languages in schools. Oh, that's interesting. Develop the Seminole province or establish an NEB. One Tesla Tower, Tesla Tower, Tesla. What is a Tesla Tower? Uh, radar stations, IT air, uh, research campus. Local factories, plus 30%. Oh, this building allows the state to be connected to the global wireless network, a system designed to allow for easily accessible wireless power. Since they're not connected to the network, suffer penalties, the industrial capacity, and supply. Oh, that's interesting. Or would you rather or have more cities in ag agroponics? Well, you can build either one. Really, I don't really care which way we go. Um, but anarcho liberals, a current literacy. This seems like it would be good to do. Um, maybe we'll do and promote EI EC adventures. Edison Electric may have been had a distributable standing in the eyes of those concerned with moral issues, but there's certainly no denying their efficiency and initial prowess. They may be profit-driven snakes. They may be questionable their treatment employees, but they are a definite boon to our economy, and that's what matters. By granting special concessions and promoting buyouts to them, we can provide a definite incentive for them to expand their business empire and prop up our partially ailing economy. They don't have no drawbacks, we're told, but we must keep a watchful eye on them nonetheless. And now, also, well, we'll wait for that. Um, let's improve our literacy. Why not? Expand the New Jersey Technical Institute. What finer source of intellect does the nation have to offer than its youth? These fine or snappers soak up knowledge like a sponge, and of course, it cycles back into our markets and government. The Edison founded New Jersey Technical Institute as one of the greatest points of cultivation we have for these brilliant minds. Expanding funding for the establishment will go a long way in improving our scientific standing in the Commonwealth, and let's not forget the international community. But we got a lot of things here. Addressing the Ministry of Indian Affairs, the Coolidge Administration. I just recently called upon the Ministry of Indian Affairs to address the issue of bilingualism versus an entirely English education curriculum for the United States or um, United Commonwealth Native American population. The debate's been, debate's been going on for some time, with arguments from both sides weighing in on the matter. On the one hand, some officials argue that preserving bilingualism will preserve the cultural heritage of the Native American communities and provide a more inclusive educational environment. Others argue that a fully English education curriculum will be more practical and beneficial for the future success of Native American individuals and the broader society. So we're going down this route, which means we want to go down here, which means I'm going to ignore this, because we're not going to promote bilingualism. We're going to discourage Native American schools. So, complete promote bilingualism? Probably not. Discourage Indian languages in favor of the English. Yeah. Maintaining native language education has been more of a hindrance than a benefit as programs to integrate the Indians into civilized society have long since sought to halt. Clearly, more encouragement is needed for those tribes to embrace their way of life, while native language media shall be defined and replaced with English only services, while in school, uh, native children will be discouraged in speaking their native tongue in and outside of the classroom. In time, there will be no one left uttering anything other than the Queen's English. Seminole ministers protest and policy changes. Ministers from the Seminole Nation protesting against the decision of the Coolidge administration to use a fully English uh, educational standard in Native American. Uh, regions. A Seminole nation, like many other Native American communities, values the preservation of their language and cultural heritage. The decision by the administration threatens to erode those important aspects of Seminole identity. 
The ministers have argued that a fully English curriculum would lead to the loss of native languages and cultural practices, which have been passed down through generations. They call for preservation of bilingualism, arguing that's essential to maintaining a strong sense of cultural identity and community. The college administration, however, has defended its decisions, citing the need for a common language to promote unity and communication between the broader United Commonwealth. The administration has also pointed to evidence suggesting that students who are educated in English have better academic outcomes and greater success in the job market. Despite the protests, the college administration appears to be committed to its position on the issue. It remains to be seen how this decision will ultimately impact the Seminole Nation and other Native American communities throughout the United Commonwealth. Perhaps we can make some exceptions. Local manpower, less resources. No special treatment, period. Uh, adds local unrest for 90 days. So, nah, we're sticking to what we have. But, before we click on the bottom one, um, the current outlook of imperial reform is neutral. Imperial attention is currently 20%. The modern imperial confederation is a product of more than a century of reforms, regressions, and a compromise to keeping the British Empire together. Initially formed following the act of autonomy that helped create the United Dominions, the Confederation has gradually expanded to transform the Empire into a supranational alliance of nations united beneath the British Crown. We'll see the Parliament of Power in London and Great Britain is able to manage many of the Confederation's economic and research affairs, including where and how to manage budgetary resources. Dominions and Commonwealth represented below have their geopolitical alignment, and measured by a percentage variable. If the nation has an alignment with a percentage of 0 to 50, less than 50, they will be aligned with the British self-faction within the Empire. From 50 to 100, such nations will be aligned with the American self-faction within the Empire. All other nations within the Empire not represented on the list below will always side with Britain should an imperial civil war break out. Countries on the list that are neutral also side with Britain. So, ooh. Interesting. Oh, we have a lot of American aligned stuff, aren't we? Oh, that's, that's interesting. Um, Carnegie doesn't care. Uh, Ireland doesn't care. Victoria's British aligned, as well as British African Authority, which we don't care about. Um, hmm, interesting. But we have managing domestic policy. The United Commonwealth's domestic policies are generally managed by supporting and discouraging particular interest groups. These groups maintain significant lobbying influence on the provincial and national parliaments. Ergo, keeping their favor is key for conducting government as we desire. There are currently six major groups that hold influence in this manner. Or, uh, Freedmen represent the provinces, primarily controlled by AFRAM groups, standing in opposition to the larger southern lobby that controls most of the Old South. War Hawks represent the expansionist elements of the government, and giving them power will allow us a freer hand in using force for diplomacy. Peaceniks, naturally, will attempt to restrain military action and diplomacy whenever possible. Mega corporations represent the influence of a corporate group on the Commonwealth, opposed by the various trade unions, while the union lacks the international influence of the megacorps, and also represent a critical voting bloc for the parliament. So, we support, uh, so freedmen support us generally, as well as southerners and mega corporations too. War Hawks, everyone else is empowered. Hmm. Oh, wow. Support for the mega corporations will de decrease. Acquire Edison expansion contracts. Chris higher production quotas. Huh. Promote union membership. Interesting. So I really have no idea what this... I've played this mob before, but I don't think I've ever played in America. So I really don't know what's going on here. Nicaragua at this current time is an occupied nation. Was it originally to receive a generous super of Canal Province is not enough for the Estrada government? Well, the current center of London, the Commonwealth armed a coalition of internal Dixie insurrectionists and turned them loose on the top of Estrada. The decision was given a sufficient plausible deniability to effectively occupy the country while using the insurrection as cover. In Nicaragua, the people are increasingly unruly under American control, as further complicating security around the canal zone. The American public is currently unaware of the extent of the occupation, but the bloodier things get, the longer the occupation carries on. More likely, that someone catches on. Catches over here. Oh, there's a canal. Oh, do we own this? Oh, they, the British do. The are currently two active insurrectionist groups following the collapse of the Sardinists in October. The Zeladonistas represent the democratic opposition, primarily led by the aging general Benjamin Zeladon. The Federalistas represent a coalition of Central American generals motivated by grand ambition and profit to restore the formerly unified Central American Republic. We must stay with Nicaragua by keeping both dis resistance factions from overtaking the American Occupation Administration. If despotist popularity drops below 10%, Stevenson's government will be in danger of being overthrown. Should this happen, Nicaragua will break free and potentially attempt to reoccupy the canals, zone, severely stalling its progress. So the government popularity is at 44%, and other popularities below that. Public relations campaign? It gives them more stability, which is nice. Are we going to hamper it? Highlight rebel uh, atrocities? Or are we going to crack down an anti American press? So, the co new constitutional republic of Nicaragua. They're a banana republic. Interesting. The reactionaries, liberals, despotism. Wait, who are you? Wait, what? Stevenson, are you? Yeah, you're. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense now. Interesting. Um, okay, well. They strike, if they do this, they'll get more popularity. 
And we imagine the military. While the world seemingly continuously shifting towards the general war once more, our government should examine policies on our armed forces and see how we can improve them. Many global militaries, despite our learning lessons from the Great War, are still in the state of stagnation. The mass adoption of armored land ships is limited, and many general staff offices filled with still men trapped in the 1910s. The future warfare is mechanized. We must modernize our military, national military in order to keep up. Decisions must be made uh, below will contribute to the modernization of the armed forces, representing the laws tab. Decisions will increase modernization to varying degrees, and upon hitting 100%, we advance to the next stage of modernization. It's currently in the interwar era, and we're zero. So, we do this one, but we don't have enough things here to do this. We need 200 army XP. God dang it. Uh, but here we have a lot of laws. I don't think there's really much we can change, so we're going to spend a little bit of political power. I'm not sure what. Uh, crack down on anti-American press. We might want to do that, maybe. Uh, increase the power of the Warhawks. Peace neck lobbies. They're disempowered. No, I don't care. Freedmen versus Southerners. I really don't know. I want more stability, though. Increase funding for the Freedmen provinces or Southern provinces. Um, trade unions do not support us, which sucks. Promote union membership. Um, I just kind of see, see what happens. You know what? Maybe we won't do anything here. This is that political power anyways. It's fine. Uh, but we have some different things here. Volunteer only. Export focus. Civilian economy, which sucks. Lu Ching Rebellion. Okay. Odd automaton. End of China. Look at that. Humans refuted. Oh. Piano player. I want to become a piano player. Um, so the economy, probably won't get out of that, but we can't. We have parliamentary republic, or parliamentary monarchy, I should say. American idealism. And how's that fair? We have Calvin Coolidge, which is a recourse. Herbert Hoover sucks. Uh, Robert uh, Menzies. Is, eh. Wilbur here sucks. We have policies. We have limited disenfranchisement. Tasmanian terror, I It's independent free press, which kind of sucks for us, but not that bad. We have public meetings allowed, of course. Full equality. But then we have the racial segregation, so, yeah. And pl standard policing. Economic policies. Standard healthcare system. Subsidized basic education. Modern, uh, s moderate state welfare. Malthusian socio-genetics. Nice. No augmentation of legislation. Banned. Encouraged. Oh, we want to encourage you, man. We also have widespread poverty, of course, in America. Industrialized, we are. Significant illiteracy, not good. Stagnant economy. We have a semi-modernized military. And fully Western nation, which is good. Technical teams, EIEC, which is an Edison Imperial Electric Corporation. Uh, technical teams, we got plenty of technical. Oh my gosh, we got quite a few technical teams. That's really cool. Yeah, we probably have staff here too. So, so that's pretty normal. But the uh, automation crisis hits America. Uh, auto, um, uh, uh, automation crisis and the United Kingdom has spread to the rest of the empire, hitting the Commonwealth particularly hard due to their reliance on EIEC's economic investments. Over a million people have most instantly, almost instantly been put out of a job, including a number of American workers. Oh, God. The situation has led to a dramatic breakdown of the stability across the country as people campaign for the return of their jobs or even stage rise to attack automated factories. Leading to the conflict with the EI, EC, Strike Breakers, and the Pinkertons. Get us some representatives on the phone now. Can I send volunteers? Oh, my gosh. Kai E? Edison's counterattack. Prime Minister Coolidge was growing increasingly frustrated with the Edison Electric Company's automation policies, which were leading to widespread job losses and civil unrest. In a meeting with the company representatives, he demanded the slowdown of the implementation of automation and work with the government to mitigate the negative effects on workers. However, the Edison Electric Company was unwilling to compromise, arguing that automation was necessary for the company's long-term success and they could not be held responsible for the social consequences. The meeting ended with both parties angry and no solution in the site. Or no solution to the issue, I guess. Coolidge left the meeting feeling frustrated and powerless, as he knew that the government had limited power to regulate private companies. He realized that if he wanted to make any progress on the issue, he needed to find a different approach. Smug dudes. Real smug. So we get about a little over one a day, but not much, but you know, it's a little over one. I want to send volunteers. Oh, Far East Administration versus these guys over here. Anti automation riots. Riots have broken out of the cities across America as so people take up to the streets to protest the recent automation policies introduced by the Edison Electric. The government's decision to replace human workers with machines has led to the loss of thousands of jobs and many now struggling to make ends meet. Anger and frustration have roiled over, and clashes between protesters and police have become increasingly violent. Shops and businesses have been looted and destroyed, and the streets have descended into chaos. The government has been forced to intervene, but their efforts to restore order so far have been met with limited success. With tensions running high and tempers flaring, many fear that the worst is yet to come. Deploy the mountains and get the people off the streets. Deploy the mountains, though. Oh god, they're actually going in. I don't think Russia has any folks here, do they? But no, they don't. American Legion mobilizes the bonus brigades. A group of American pre-war, American Greek War uh, veterans have gathered <clears throat> in Philadelphia to demand that an early release of bonuses promised them by the government. The veterans who have been struggling to make ends meet in the middle of the, in the midst of the automation crisis, are determined to fight for what they believe is rightfully theirs. They set up the camp in the city, and their numbers are growing by the day. The government, however, has been reluctant to release the bonuses early. Prime Minister Coolidge 
has argued the bonus should be paid on schedule, in 1945 and releasing them early to set a dangerous precedent. It has also expressed concerns that the protests could turn violent. Despite these concerns, the bonus brigade remained determined to see the demands met. They have been holding peaceful demonstrations throughout the city and refused to leave until the demands are met. The situation remains tense as many are worried that the protests could turn violent if a solution or resolution is not turned or reaching soon. Let's get them out, at the very least. Yeah, it's probably good to hear people out, you know, at the very least. You never know what might happen, but... It's always good to, let, to hear them out. Not Everest conquered. Nice. Good job, guys. The EIEC has sent a short letter, uh... Uh, stating their support for a decision, and to boot they've ordered the expansion of the British factory complex as an order encouraged us to maintain this path. While one might consider this to be extremely corrupt, the argument could be made that we're simply cooperating with our economic partners. Who said greasing some palms was a bad thing? Ooh, Alpha Math City. Yay. Exclusive contracts to the EIEC. Our military is for the most part bound to the will of London. It is as well as desired by His Majesty, and our capabilities from a standpoint of armaments can be often lacking. However, as an electric, as a fine loophole for this issue, while trusted by Britain, the EIEC had to hold no true loyalty to them and they must act in the name of profit, nothing more, nothing less. By further integrating the EIEC into our military industrial complex, we could benefit considerably and reduce our reliance on directly or on direct supply from London. General Butler endorses the Legion. General Smelly Butler, a retired Marine Corps officer and outspoken critic of the government, has emerged as a prominent voice in the ongoing bonus brigade crisis. In a recent speech, General Butler advocated for a peaceful solution to the crisis, calling on the government to honor its promises to the bonus brigades. General Butler has argued that the bonus brigades have every right to demand the bonuses promised to them by the government, and the government had a moral obligation to pay them. He urged the government to avoid the use of force in dealing with the protesters, and instead negotiate a settlement that would satisfy both sides. Many praise General Butler's stance as a voice of reason in a time of crisis, while others have criticized him for advocating for what they receive as an unjust demand. Nevertheless, General Butler, his words have resonated with many Americans, and there's a hope that his message of peace and reconciliation may help bring an end to the crisis. Don't keep his nose out of politics. Without Butler's support, we may have a greater difficulty negotiating terms with the Legion. <sighs> I honestly don't I won't do the top one, but you know what? Let him do that. And also, where are we at with this? Um oh. Irish Autonomous Provinces. Raj. Oh, those are our allies. Irish Citizens Army. Well, we're gonna kill some Irish, I guess. I don't think I want to send any divisions over. I'd rather just send planes. So. Oh, and they'll give us... Oh, yeah, we could actually... That was actually pretty good overall. Um, right now, and for to deploy development... This is where our development screen is right now, here, too. So, modernization, economic health, industrialization. So, we're trying to improve our economy right now. Um, here. Irish secession, huh? Oh, right. Industry. Very nice. Fighters, fighters. We got a lot of fighters, but we need... Yeah, the attack bombers. There you go. Arabia's doing stuff. Cool. The American Legion arrives in Philadelphia. Oh, we're giving us this. Yay! The American Legion delegation has arrived in Philadelphia with significant reinforcements. Nearly 20,000 demonstrators have fled in the capital to support the delegation. While they generally aren't well armed, the RAMP have noted that many significant wartime augmentation that could pose a threat to the public. Coolidge now surrounded in his own country's capital by thousands of unemployed and angry veterans. Now it's decide how to address the crisis. Around the protests would be deeply unpopular, but with the right media to spend could be portrayed as defeating troublemakers. On the other hand, capitulation would make Coolidge look weak to the public and the Empire, and the UCA may not be able to effectively foot the bill required. Third option, negotiate, may be the best path for preventing bloodshed, but will require some compromises on both sides. This decision must be made, and soon. So that's how we wish to tackle the bonus brigade crisis. No, a very American kind of crisis. This fair country of ours, one arrived with contradiction, home to a variety of humble people, to new and distinct cultures descended from a shared Anglo heritage, the citizens of the Commonwealth, are liable to bouts of confusion, confused, de, uh, oh, well, look at that, confused dissension, as exemplified during the infamous Washington Rebellion. Though perhaps not quite as drastic, the crisis we now face befits the history of such confused people. So now I've addressed concerns of our veterans, lest we not face worse than mere demonstrations. Regional stability have long-term effects for every campaign. Oh boy. Rush and crush solution. Suppress militias. Well, this option is more expedient. Cracking down on American citizens are, or otherwise will severely damage the party's popularity. Mobilize rampies and HG. Stalling for time. Kick down the gates. Escalate domination. Or dominance. Art of the deal. Show the country how much of back biding Washington you are and bend over backwards for a gang of blood sucking revolutionaries and anarchists who will split you, still put you up against the wall and piss on your corpse no matter how many compromises you end in the favor. This option negatively impact your chances in the next election to a lesser degree. Be with bonus leaders. Water down the solution. Choose Butler as an inter intermediary. Gradual bonus rollout. Of all regional stability is very stable, the bonus will cost more. A stable, other conditions, uh, for two years. Total bonus plan reorganization. But bonus brigade crisis will come to an end. 
more stability and political power, which I do like. But we get that same one right here, too. How about Art of the Deal? As the bonus army marches on the capital, our leaders have been working tirelessly with London to determine the best course of action to take. But recently, more and more people have begun to realize the obvious solution to the problem, simply paying them. It's quick, politically popular, and not violent. While we must, of course, determine exactly how much to pay for who, we can go through their demands and perhaps reach a compromise on what they want. Sometimes the most obvious solution is truly the best option. Well, I don't know which way is the best option, but whatever. Unrest or not completed, we lose 20% stability overall, probably. Very simple, very simple, very simple. Bones Brigade supports clash with authorities, just like this morning. Bones Brigade supports clash with authorities throughout the Melbourne super colony, causing significant damage to the lower sectors. The riots are completely paralyzed cities, leading to a widespread looting. A number of these riders have been taken members of the Royal Armored American or Mounted Police. Uh, hostage and demand of the Commonwealth stand down in this crisis. Local authorities have state, stated that they will not negotiate with these terrorists, but I'll secretly contact the provisional government to advise them how to handle the situation. Or can we shoot them? Pretend like we'll meet their demands and arrest them. We're falling apart here at the seams, man. Bonus Brigade is arrested. After receiving orders to negotiate, the RAMP was able to convince the Bonus Brigade hostage takers in Melbourne to stand down on the pretense that the government had given in to their demands. The truth, they simply provided doctored information immediately arrested. While the incident has been escalated significantly, there still marks a dramatic shift towards violence on the part of the protests. No doubt the Brigadiers will argue their case in the Ministry Courts. They'll most likely not see the outside of the jail cell for some time. Due to process, my buddy, you're all being locked up. A killing Melbourne. An unidentified homeless man was found dead in the Melbourne lower sector this morning, apparently. Discovered by a group of local kids looking for scrap to recycle. The body's in poor condition. I haven't been decapitated at some point in the last 48 hours. Jesus. Medical examiners have also stated the body. Shows signs of literature, uh, ligature marks, indicating that the victim was likely bound and kept at a secondary location prior to the murder. One notable detail is that the victim appears to have been a veteran, as his torso had been faded, had faded identification tattoos that were made standard during the Great War. American forces often had difficulty in identifying the dead in the trenches, and so torso identification tattoos became government policy and that shortly before the cessation of hostilities in Spain. Unfortunately, however, tattoos were too faded to accurately discern due to a mix of weathering and integumentary damage done to the killing. All it tells us is that the victim was a veteran, something not particular in low supply thanks to the bonus crisis. The killings led to minor panic among Melbourne's lower sector and retaliation and attacks against local hobo camps are becoming a problem. A police, uh, city's police commissioner, Elliot Ness, has been tasked with attempting to resolve the murder before a double event can occur. Start banging some heads together and we need some leads. God dang it. There you go. Well, we're going to do this one real quick. Yeah, maybe not real quick, but whatever. Suppress Midwestern militias. Oh! This is a weird miracle we're looking at. You got Commonwealth not strong enough. Do we put him in Midwest South, New England, yeah. When aborted. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have to have augments here, which looks really cool. Jet troopers, but we're gonna go with Automex and we're gonna go with quadrupods to see if they're any good. Uh, support units. Yeah, support weapons one. Quadrupods. I like quadrupods because they have the most armor. Nice. Light tanks, we'll still use those for that for now though. Pax Americana says records, nice. Part of the deal. I mean, you know what? What if we like, abandon New England? Should have enough of this. Melbourne Torso Killer strikes again. Uh, another body power was found in Lower Melbourne today this time in one of the public parks. Oh, God. A woman was found decapitated and drained of blood by a family on the way to the local church service. Jesus Christ. The body had suffered numerous stabs and bludgeoning wounds, along with damage to arm and leg augmentations. The medical examiner subsequently identified the augmentations as consistent with civilian grade modifications provided to razor maidens when not in active service. It's clear now that the killer is targeting veterans for whatever reason, a theory that Commissioner Ness has heavily pushed to his officers and detectives. A more radical has been proposed by the American Police Ministry, who argue that we should begin the process of criminally profiling the killer based on their modus operandi. The field of criminology, though relatively new, could prove to be exactly the edge we need in returning safety to the streets of Melbourne. That's terrible. You know what? Let's get hit. 
We just don't have enough, do we? Dang it. Um, there, get rid of that. Let's consider Old South. Old Dixie. There we go. Long-term effects of regional stability will be likely reduced. Uh, suppress militias? We'll probably do that one. We'll try to be fair in these talks with the veterans. We cannot let our guard down, but hope that these men will be understanding that the goals are just a little too lofty as they stand on that. And then a slightly smaller ask can be met. After all, something is better than nothing, right? Probably. Add another 50 days to it. Music redefined. Meeting with bonus leaders. Sitting down with the leaders of the so-called bonus army may yield some rewards. When all of them jerk us around, many will say talking is a waste of time, but it's far preferable to alternative solutions. We'll meet with these leaders and hopefully they can be convinced to lay down their arms and get back to serving this country. Hopefully. Right, so you know what? Let's abandon the south for now. Get all these guys up there. We need a lot of divisions for all this. There you go. Uh, I'm going to board it. 14 days. Of course, we could have waited for this, but whatever. Midwestern militias. But we do have this one being done too, which is good. Uh, wait five days, we can do that. That's fine. Should be a little bit less of a cost. Nice. Water down solution is good. And then meet with the bonus leaders. Good God. Two more killings in Melbourne. Another two victims were discovered in Melbourne earlier today. Making this the first double event of Melbourne torso killings. The victims, two local transients from the Lower East Sector, were discovered by two children on the way to school. The victims have been decapitated. Their torso was stabbed multiple times with a drain of blood. This only means the way in which they were identified was by their wartime identification tattoos, which indicated the ramp that the men were also veterans. It's clear enough the killers deliberately targeting vulnerable, disenfranchised veterans. Typically, those displaced by the bonus crisis. Leads continue to be scarce, and civil authorities are urging the public to remain calm until the situation is back under control. Police Commissioner Ness continues to involve himself heavily in the investigation, frustrated by the inability of the RAMP to catch a killer once again. You gotta be stupidly kidding me. Jews, brothers, and intermediary. Smiley Brothers was a man for the plan. He served a country with great distinction and an ear to the ground to the veterans and their goals. This makes him a perfect name to tap for negotiation. Working with them might just be the thing we need to push these negotiations to the close. Hopefully. Come on, back over. Nice. Hopefully we'll do okay here. Ah, coffee's pretty good though. Oh, 33 percent stability, huh? Oh, well, now it's twenty-three percent. God dang it! There you go. Let's get more army speed now, right now, which is pretty good. God, it's so long to do this. Jesus. Probably do total plan reorganization, gradual bonus rollouts. Three sixty, seven twenty. I'd rather have the penalty done now. In all honesty, Spain joins the pact. Your best be word. Maybe next time we'll just kill off everybody around us. So, international telescreening, huh? Southern militias. New England militias. Appalachian. Well, launch mass protests. Supporters of the Bones Brigades in Philadelphia launched a mass protest earlier today, attempting to push their provincial governments to support the bonus demands. The protests are drawn. Uh, large numbers of American citizens, many of whom have felt disenfranchised by the uh, automation crisis and the recent unrest. Mercifully, there have been little violence, but there remains the pressing issue of public sympathy for the bonus army forces. At least they're being peaceful. And all oh, New England stuff, too. New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. Uh, there we go. 
Quote potential breakthrough in Melbourne. And Long, uh, Long Island, huh? Investigation in Melbourne has had a breakthrough. Criminal prof profilers have identified the killers. <clears throat> As having a killer anti-veteran bias, we'll also note the stab wounds on the victims are consistent with the combat afforded or combat treated afforded to American shock troopers in the Iberian campaign. Stab wounds are also consistent with the combat knives issued of these shock troopers, particular serrations on several points within the stab wounds themselves. Following upon this, the RAMP index Commonwealth records for individuals who served within the American shock trooper forces during the war and turned up several results. Please begin work to look at the individuals mentioned within this system. Now we'll report back the results as they are found. We might be getting somewhere. Oh, well, maybe I wasn't supposed to move. Oh, whoops. Oh, well. MREs. Nice. Um, it is still 1933. Can't do too much yet. Here's your speed, yeah. Dinosaur debut. Uh-oh. South is unstable, but what else do you expect? After that, that'll be done, thank God. Um, I'm gonna say this. Ooh. Oh, so we definitely can't do this one. Uh, effects of Melbourne Mega City. Oh, raid stockpile. Uh, they're able to. Bonus brigaders were able to successfully raid a police weapon stockpile earlier this morning. Claiming a number of small arms before they were chased out, while it's not a major loss in terms of equipment. It's become clear that the brigadiers are attempting to arm themselves, presumably in an effort to overthrow the government of whatever misguided nonsense they're peddling now. This cannot continue. Mega City. Mass electrification. A lot of the influence of the Edison Electric Company and the government. Yeah, we still need to exclusive contracts with the EIEC. Medium frames. I mean, that's not bad. I'd rather have engines, though. Unstable, unstable, unstable. Well, welcome to America. All right, don't have very much here. Yeah, not good, not good at all. That carrier is not even that great either. Yeah. Oh, we literally have no fuel, holy crap. Let's start with something here. Mm. Make plenty of convoys for now. Oh, improve. Peace with honor. Look at that. Oh, what do we have here? Light land ship, great war, automat. Food light land ship, basic light land ship. Don't want to slow us down too much. Basic radio is pretty nice. We don't do too much else here, really. Armor's not bad. Production cost goes up by quite a bit, though. But not that much. There you go. Come on, get it before you get hit again. We're very unstable now. There you go. Nice. And with 3% stability, the dust settles in the crisis. Many politicians and citizens believe that Coolidge did not do enough to address the concerns of the veterans and his lack of action led to the violent removal of the veterans from the encampment in Philadelphia by the military. Some have even called for the resignation over the matter. 
Goes to defend his actions, saying that he has to uphold the law and maintain order in the city. However, the controversy surrounding his response to the crisis has only grown and been a call for further investigation and accountability. The bonus army crisis remains on stain on the Coolidge administration, and protests and unrest continue even after the end of the general crisis itself. Prevent a revolution, this is so good thanks to. Hey, we have no stability, of course. Why would we? Parliament passes. Oh, look at that. Uh, no confidence vote. In a shock of turning events, the Parliament of the United Commonwealth passed a no confidence vote, leading to the resignation of Prime Minister Coolidge in favor of the Deputy Minister Charles Evan Hughes. The vote comes off as the wake of the Bones Brigade crisis, where Coolidge faced intense criticism for his handling of the incident. Political analysis, particularly the process of selecting a new Prime Minister, may take some time. It could be a contentious one in the meantime. The government will be run by an interim Prime Minister until a permanent replacement is found. Oh crap, we lose more political power? God dang it. Bruh. We have all sorts of stuff over here too. Liberty and progress. Liberals. That's a huge tree. Huh. Philadelphia calls for fresh elections. Prime Minister Hughes, after the resignation of Calvin Coolidge, has called for early elections to strengthen support for the Federal Unionist Party. New comes after the Conservative government faced severe criticism for their handling of the Bonus Brigade crisis, crisis, which saw thousands of World War I veterans campaign, camping out better in Philadelphia to determine the promised bonuses led to a violent confrontation between the protesters and the Royal American Army. The interim Prime Minister has promised to address concerns of the public and improve the government's response to the crises. He has urged citizens to come out and vote for a stable government that can steer the country through these difficult times. He has also promised to prioritize social welfare programs, support for the veterans with upcoming elections. The opposition parties have welcomed the move for early elections, calling it an opportunity for the people to hold the government accountable for its actions. The campaign for the elections already started, with parties unveiling the manifestos and holding rallies across the country. Elections are expected to be fiercely contested, with the opposition parties seeking to capitalize on the government's shortcomings and the public's dissatisfaction. Against all odds, the federal union remains. Special elections. Progressives finally get a win. Stand for an altern alternative in office. Social credit. What the heck? I honestly have no idea what this is. John Curtin for the Liberals. Conservatives, Hughes. Um, Special Elections Conservative. Oh, we're a conservative party right now. Um, Anarcho Liberals, Von, Von Mosley. Reactionaries, despotismio, despotism. State Socialists. Alternative for Social America. Social credit. Reactionaries. Soccer victory. Oh man, I don't know. Who are you? Alternative in office? So uh, let's take a look at the trees real quick before we do anything else. This will probably tell us where we're going to go. Special elections. Hell or high water, the unionists remain. The Jersey clique. Compromise the southerners. Eyes to the north, eyes to the south. A hammer to the fence. Free states alliance against corn Georgia. Lose corn Georgia. Bleeding south. Maintain the red lines. Amend the Crittenden compromise. M imagining a racial diet. Separate but equal provinces. Demilitarize white mobs. Corn of the secret empire. Litigate white militias. Pro Dixie rhetoric. Preserve the literacy t tests. As the North, labor purchases, spurned by London, productive provinces, eyes to the West. So that's a conservative route. Let's see. So a liberal party route, versus Indian policy, loses corn to Nola. Then we consider and accept the culture. Americanization effort. Ooh. We draw Indian majority districts. Ooh. That's cool. Specter of lady economy. Imperial tension will increase a little bit more. Negotiate America's contribution. Kellogg's London plan. I apologize that we're not doing very much. I just don't know this at all. Abolish intra imperial tariffs. Form a community of North American nations. Bank of America's open. Special relationship. Contribute to peacekeeping. End of the Wallabut, Halibut Wars. Form the North, Man North Atlantic Trade Organization. One empire, two economies. One imperial economy. Stop fencing. Address the southern issue. Bleeding south decisions. Always up about boundaries. Dial up the heat. Revive the steel belt. Crush corporate America. American Marine Corps. That seems really cool. And then has won the Imperial Civil War. 
And then America for the Workers. My apologies for taking so long again. National Workmen's Party? Oh, they're socialists. How do you get socialists? An alternative for social America. Social criticism. Reactionaries. Begin the social credit experiment. Find discrepancy. Promote A plus B theorem. Distributive economics. Denounce barter economics. Inspiration from keys. How do you say that? I think it's keys. Prosperity certificates. Establish a national stipend. Synchronized movement. Oh, that's not bad. That's actually really good. Virgin Lands campaign. The Hungarian wing of the Socrates will be empowered. Freeman and Southerners both like this. They're going to imperial banking. The Party for the Working Man. Working America. National Poverty Relief. Party for Modern America. An engineer of Social America. Melbourne as a clean city. So this is like technocrat stuff. But rea that's reactionary. Push for democratic redistribution. Pro process of encouraging population movement out of the Melbourne super colony to other regions of the Commonwealth. One popper reduces the population burden in the megacity and allows successfully redevelop it for future generations. Synchronized birth control. Oh, wow. The South knows best. Ooh. Reinforce Crittenden. Denounce Colton's doctrine. Gospel social justice. That's not bad. Plus 2,000 weekly manpower? Holy crap. A little moral augmentation. Criminalize steel disfigurement. Limit the abolitionists. National alcohol ban. Threaten the Masonic threat. Target them. Charge against money changers. Oh, no Jewies here, huh? A nation for all Christians. More America aligned. Anti Catholic doctrine. Hmm. Rectify the potted divide. Well, I don't know. I like all these. They're all very interesting. Um, Liberal Party seems interesting. So I apologize for taking so long with it. I might just go with the conservative option, maybe? Well, maybe, maybe not. But there's more, there's more open things here you can do, it seems like. Because you face the South, you got face that, and you can face a whole bunch of different things. Um, I'm going to go with the Liberal Party. Progressives? No, it's Progress Party, though. Progressive victory with uh, Liberty and Progress. Which I assume is the Liberal Party, so... Uh, we could try it. Yeah, we'll try it. Surprising officer, the Progressive Party has won a majority of seats in the United Commonwealth's national elections. It's marks a major shift in the country's political landscape, as traditionally dominant conservative parties have been relegated to minority position. Analysts say that the election results are reflected a growing dissatisfaction among voters with uh, the status quo and a desire for change. The conservative parties vowed to regroup and remount strong opposition in the coming years, but for now, the Progressive Party holds the reins of power in the United Commonwealth. The torch of idealism is lit. I like this idea, but stop fencing. Why not? The Progressive Party will take a strong stance against segregation policies in the South. They're working to dismantle the laws that have perpetuated racial inequality and discrimination for decades. The party sees these policies as a violation of basic human rights and is committed to eradicating them. It's election season in America. Intentions are high as citizens head to the polls to cast their votes. Uh, many are eagerly watching the results come and curious to see who will come out on top. And as the final tallies are counted, it's going to clear the Liberal Progressive Party led by John Kern that has emerged victorious in several key provinces. It's a major win for the party, which has been campaigning hard on issues like social welfare, education, and workers' rights. But the rest of the test is yet to come. Will Kern be able to unite his party and deliver his promises to the people? Only time will tell. But liberal electoral victory. In uh, a historic election, the Progressive Party has emerged victorious in the United Commonwealth, uh, with John Kern at its own. <coughs> the Party has won a significant margin, promising a series of reforms to improve the lives of ordinary citizens. Kern, a former labor union leader, has vowed to prioritize workers' rights, increase public spending on education and health care, and promote a more inclusive society. The new administration's pledge to work towards great equality, diversity, and social justice, and to tackle corruption and corporate influence in politics. The victory of the Progressive Party signals a new era in the United Commonwealth politics, with potential for significant changes to come. Path of progress has been laid, fourth victim identified. Fourth victim, I was identified by Melbourne lower sector coroner uh, Martin Donaldson, Donald, Donaldson, a sharpshooter with the 85th Shock Troopers Corps that served in the Iberian campaign. After doing further research, of course, we've uncovered that at least two of the other victims were also part of the 85th. Well, go figure. And so I'll draw, draw a clear line of the potential identity of the killer, though. Police are still searching th through Melbourne for our further suspects. It's notable, however, that the 85th was directly involved in the siege of uh, Valladolid and suffered significant casualties. Curiously, the army records on their involvement has all been heavily expunged outright classified. Get results now. Or get, get them now. Get them now. Uh, 
Oh yeah, we have to focus on Nicaragua, huh? Yeah, maybe we can. Increase troop deployments. We're gonna launch a campaign. New constitution in Nicaragua. Oh. Look at that. Stop fencing. Because now we can't do any of this. Oh, can't do most of this. Yeah, Miss Mr. Ness. Letter stank, spilling drops of blood on his desk. Ness looked around at the officer of the other officers, their expressions ranging from morbid curiosity to choking down vomit. The writer of the officer of the private courier paid in pounds and unable to say exactly who the original writer was. Untraceable, of course, because why make things easy on the investigation? He slid the letter open across the top and peeled it apart, unleashing the sick, sickly sweet smell of rotten in the room. Officers backed away a few running for garbage bins of vomit. Ness held his breath and reached his gloved hand into the envelope before dumping the contents onto his desk. A rotting human eyeball tumbled out, still dripping with a congealed clot of blood. Ness could only guess which victim it had come from. The heads of the last two still hadn't been found. The letter within it was smeared and shoddily written, but with some effort he could rank out the words. Dear Mr. Ness, I'm so sorry for what I did to these men, but you must understand the importance of my work. We need retribution for what we did, and once my work is completed, you will receive my confession in full, and I, for an will make the world right. Dear God in heaven, what the garbage is this? As we revive the steel belt. So what do we have for, for uh, National Spirit? One of our two systems. Um, what's over here? here? Current in compromise. Cowern, legacy, legacy of the Iberian campaign, British Confederation. Influence, bonus brigade stipends, that's fine. Um, Governor General Prince Edward sucks. Um, which is good though. Actually, fuel tanks probably don't need those. Armor, yeah, that's important. Address uh, a southern issue. Interesting, there's been a considered effort to revitalize the steel belt by redeveloping former industrial sites, promoting new business investment, and creating job opportunities. The redevelopment efforts aim to create a modern, diversified economy that can sustain the region's future growth and prosperity with a renewed focus on innovation, uh, entrepreneurship, and technology. The steel belt's poised for a new era of success. Nice. We can do that one. We'll do one of these first. Expand. Majestic 11 operations. They walked into danger, blinded, is fully, fo utterly foolish. You must know your enemy and think, believe we have the perfect way to do just that. Ministry 1. Our national intelligence research is almost unparalleled in the field and can certainly serve as a rise in these particularly rebellious regions. By expanding your funding and activities for Nicaraguan operations, we'll have more secure understanding of rebel activities and how to combat them. Yeah. Definitely so. They were going down. Look this guy. Die hard reformer. My god, do we need some stability. But we do have old Dixie here too. Or I guess new Dixie. Jackson over here. Kansas. Stevens. Look at Bob. Bilbo. Bilbo. Katie, of course. Probably Tejas. Stimulants. I love stimulants. Heart attacks, piercing. Ooh. Piercing's not much. We'll go with this one. Hey, we'll see what happens. I don't know. 48%. It's not bad. Yeah, the change is going down a little bit, though. Anarchy, huh? But do we care? Fifth victim identified. Fifth victim was just found on the outside of the morning Melbourne. This time dumped in the park just outside the lower Melbourne Police Department. This message is clear and obviously intended for the police commissioner, Ness. The body was once again lacerated multiple times with the head removed with some kind of blunt object and the body drained of blood. Notably, the identification tattoos and several cuts around him in the shape of arrows clearly meant to draw attention to the individual's identity. The man in question is Herbert Creeley, an ex-officer within the 85th Shock Infantry Corps that served in Iberia, just like the other identified victims. Creeley was notably dishonorably discharged for inappropriate conduct during the siege of Valladolid. Balo, uh, However, like other victims, his records were expunged by Majestic 11. Killer is either mocking us, he's trying to send a message. We cannot have panic in the streets. We cannot. So we're going down to Superior Firepower, which is not bad. Mass assault. I guess we're going to go down this way. It's 130, though. We don't have to spend it immediately. We can just hold on to it for now. Oh, you're actually part of this. Okay. You know what? We have this problem now. We can also keep working on this for maybe for now. Authorized further development. 
With none surprised to hear, the Nicaraguans are more than dissatisfied with their occupation of their nation for the sake of the canal. Riots, protests, and all kinds of resistance have cemented themselves to the complex, and there are unfortunately no signs of this dwindling any time soon. Once the Poland additional garrison reserves, the Commonwealth's finance the most brutal to quash local resistance and further screw up potential interests in the region. No such thing as a protester. Revolutions are like a fire. They only take a spark to ignite. They're dangerous and spread like flakes. Likewise, the spark is riot. One riot with enough force can explode in a thousand more and lead to dire consequences. Some would say the right to protest should be a shrine of liberty, but really, what's the difference between a protest and a riot when you're dealing with occupation? Let the boys in blue have their way with these fermenters of revolution. This is a torso killer speaking. Oh boy. No, I can close out this one maybe for now. Freeman really supports so. The National News Hour, a program hosted by Edward Bowles. The call lines are open for viewers of persimmon questions of what the week's interview is, or in, week's interview eat. In this instance, neurology pioneer Walter Freeman attended the show to promote his new cutting edge lobotomy procedures. Within 10 minutes, an individual caught into the show and announced himself as a Melbourne torso killer and proceeded to describe to Bill Willard Bowles his manifesto. According to the killer, the attacks are retribution for his unit's actions during the Great War. He claims that during the Battle of Valladolid, his unit conducted vast killings of numerous surrendered Spanish troops and civilians. Before I could provide further information, however, Majestic 11 agents stormed the building and forced to shut down the program. Crucially, however, the call remained in the line for just long enough for the police to get a rough idea of his location. A call from deep within the lower Melbourne industrial sector, the com and Commissioner Ness has gone along with the team to attempt to apprehend the killer before the man can escape. Track that phone call. Forward under hell. The door slammed inwards as the police stormed the abandoned factory complex, where it had once been a simple packaging plant. Shut down during the automation crisis, now the personal headquarters of Ness's target. As the police swarmed in, they quickly located a scrawny man attempting to flee out one of the broken windows. The man was clearly malnourished, but still muscular enough to pull up quite the fight before his car, even biting the ear off one of the officers. Ness could only watch as the man thrashed on the dirty factory floor, only stopped once their eyes met. With a smile crooked, broken teeth, he spoke. I wasn't sure if you'd make it, Mr. Ness. He rolled himself onto his belly, the size of the police commissioner. His body was covered in cuts, at least a few hundred. Each nightly leaned up, each, each nightly, neatly lined up as though they were tally marks. They don't, they don't teach you fellas what we did in the war, do they? They think they put that in the papers? Ness sneered, almost instinctively kicking the bound man in the stomach. Shut your teeth, or shut your mouth, freak. You're going straight to the gosh darn sheriff if I have any say in it. The kid seemed unfazed as it kept rambling on and on. His words become borderline incoherent, like mine. Did they tell you about the church guy? Well, we'll round them all up. Everyone was so tired, dog tired, to take a shot at us on the march up. Cracked Johnny's mask. They were still gassed in the air, you know, invisible. Dead in an hour. Well, watch it happen. We found, we found the girl that did it. What did it? Nessie boy. And you know what they did to her? Commissioner stood there silent. The rest of the officers were unsure what to say. The killer started to shake, his knees buckling, and he kept babbling in between bouts of tears and snot. They cut her up bad, man. They cut her up and they had her. And they shot up the whole church she was firing from. I watched him do it too. I couldn't do anything about it then, but I had to make things right. I had to make them pay, man. I had to. They weren't right for what we did back there. Silence over in the room, only broken by the killer's sobs and thrashing on the floor. I had felt like an eternity. Ness finally motioned for the other officers to carry the man outside, where it was regrettably surprised to find Magic Eleven agents waiting dutifully nearby. They were above his pay grade, and thus there were little that he could do to stop them as they took the killer in tow and set up a cleanup crew into the factory. Maybe there's no real justice in the end. Probably not, but whatever. You like to think that it would be. Not bad. I'm gonna actually make a cure that's actually halfway decent, even though we have like no ships. We should probably research some better stuff here. Trial Carl McPherson. Kill be identifies Mr. Carl McPherson, a former soldier and a veteran of the Iberian campaign. Those records indicate that he's involved in the siege of Valladolid. Those expected, the Magistic Eleven uh, refused to release any records on his involvement in any kind of civilian's massacre. In fact, the agency went so far as to claim McPherson was a uh, <clears throat> delusional a fact corroborated by his appearance in court. McPherson was functionally cat cat catatonic by the time he reached the courtroom, and the trial proceeded relatively uneventfully. Commissioner Ness claimed that McPherson's appearance and temperament was inconsistent with how he was at the time of his arrest, however, the Commonwealth military and MJ-11 countered by claiming that the McPherson had been rendered an unstable invalid long before entered police custody. Conspiracy theories have claimed that McPherson was chemically lobotomized while in custody of MJ-11 following his arrest, but the story has largely been downplayed by the media in favor of the circuses around McPherson's expected death sentence. Oh, there are many members of the McPherson unit, including those associated with the victims, that refuse to comment on the validity of his claims. Military records indicate no such massacre involved. However, inquests for information that is still classified have been denied. The jury votes in favor of the death penalty. Goodbye. So here's what we really want. Rapid fire... Oh, medium batteries, yeah. Light battery cruisers, there you go. Fire control, sonar, sub detection, that'd be good, but. Cruiser number three, wow. 
That's all we got for now. But what you gonna do about it? <sighs> Not very much. Happy 1934, though, everybody. You Pope? Clement the, the 15th? Oh, the United Nations of Germany. Kingdoms. Wow. Thick. It is gonna have a good time. Serbia's pretty thick, too. No such thing as a protester. Mm. Make empty promises. Westminster is undoubtedly master of the art of native pacification from local rulers of the original concession. The methods employed uh, have been able to sustain a massive, uh, the, as massive the British global hegemon thus far. So, like father, like so, we need to take a page out of the book and I have some promises to the Nicaraguans. The cries for democracy and freedom will be met with uh, <clears throat> our warm and understanding acceptance whilst we cross our fingers and draw the process of liberalization for as long as possible, ideally, of course, forever. Focus on federalistas. Focus on the zeladonistas. So right now we probably want to focus on the federalistas. Very nice. What do you want? Good, you want nothing. Um, Great Balkan War, nice. Focus on the Federalistas. With the resistance to our military presence in Nicaragua growing daily, we must track while we have the wide public support. Let's can further be assured by proving ourselves capable of defending the region against the rest of peace. And the Federalists are a perfect candidate for this. A reactionary group, there is little sympathy for them with their own borders. I mean, they can be easily be vilified through propaganda and create an easy morale boost. Let's make it an obvious target for Operation Musketeer. Nice. Nice. Flush of munitions. Support companies, armor trains, slow two ahead of time. Shock jockeys, huh? It's kinda cool. Armor. I guess maybe. Wallonia, huh? Power back. As part of our ongoing liberalization efforts in Nicaragua, we'll should install a parliamentary democracy based off our system here in Philadelphia. Local collaborators and top Philadelphian administrators will begin drafting a constitution for them by which they can elect their own into the national government and administer themselves. Importantly, their top brass will be approved by us, ensuring our continued grip over their internal affairs and increasing our role in their external politics. Perfect. True American way. I'm sure why we're propping them up, but you know, whatever. Nicaraguan Reconstruction Plan. British occupation has come out of cost. Constant localized uh, insurrections and rise of lead accounts damage uh, to industry and key institutions has led to severe economic difficulties. Not to mention exploitative practices by the empire itself. By pumping some vital funds into the industry, we can probably the administration slowly but surely make Nicaragua rely on us economically. Lessons of Iberia. Or this one. We're innovating the Royal Army. The United Commonwealth will reform the military forces in the coming years. The process will involve significant changes to the structure, organization, and capabilities of the armed forces. The government invests heavily in modernizing equipment and technology, as well as training and recruitment of personnel. New strategies and tactics will be developed to address emerging threats and challenges to national security. The goal of these reforms will create a more efficient, effective, and agile military that is better equipped to protect the interests and sovereignty of the American Empire at home and abroad, of course. You know what, we must do this one, so we select to lose 100, 200 army XP for 100 days, so you lose a lot of army XP from fully removed move to get fully modernized military. Which is pretty good, actually. Because I'd like more army XP. Lessons of Iberia. The United Commonwealth was heavily involved in the Iberian front of the Great War, which honed our military forces into a cutting edge organization. This war saw the introduction of new technology such as machine guns, automats, and chemical weapons, which caused significant casualties and made traditional tactics ineffective. A traditional strategy of frontal assaults where troops would charge the enemy lines proved to be ineffective and costly in terms of lives lost instead. A new strategy of trench warfare was developed where soldiers dug into the ground to create elaborate systems of trenches and fortifications. Ooh, more cities. I like that too. 
expanded industry in the Midwest. As the fall of the calm, the United Continental continues to modernize its armed forces. The demand for advanced military technology continues, such as drones, missiles, and armor plating is increasing. To meet this demand, companies in the Midwest are investing heavily in research and development and expanding their production capabilities. Did I read this one? Yeah. Yeah, I read this one earlier, I think. So, Pay for 8 hour workday, huh? Renovate the Eastern Seaboard. That would be bad, too. Oh, immediately getting two carriers and two cruisers, huh? The East Coast of America has always been a hub of economic activity, but recent efforts have focused on expanding industry in the region. From the bustling cities of New York and Boston to the smaller towns along the coast, new factories and manufacturing centers are bobbing up all over. These efforts are aimed at creating more jobs for workers and providing a boost to the local economy. Construction of new infrastructure such as highways, bridges, and rail lines is also underway, helping to connect the East Coast with other parts of the country and facilitate the movement of goods and people. But I think I'm going to end right there, my friends. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do, and, uh, ooh. Uh, see what America's got. Well, at least the United Commonwealth of America, that is. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.